Today, Intel's new iGPU is faster than AMD, 105W TDP boost gets tested, AMD's epic new gaming CPU gets benchmarked, and Nvidia's RTX 5000 is huge power draw, but it's insanely fast. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, Intel has officially launched their new Lunar Lake chips. And while there's a lot to discuss here, the main thing I want to focus on is some huge claims when it comes to their next-gen integrated graphics. Starting things off, as you can see right here, they are flat claiming they have the world's best built-in GPU, i.e. integrated GPU, iGPU, all that good stuff. And we're actually going to go through each one of these because they actually do give specific benchmarks here and as you can see according to this they're claiming a pretty wild 31 percent performance increase versus the current gen core ultra 7 155h and what's wild about that is the simple fact that the 155h was no slouch when it came to integrated graphics gaming sure amd was still ahead but not by all that much moving on we have the qualcomm x elite chip and as you can see here they're claiming a wild 68% increase, but they're also making a pretty big statement here because as you can see, at least according to them, these are the games, the DNR, that didn't actually play. And of course, we know that Qualcomm is having issues when it comes to the fact that this is ARM on Windows and quite a few games don't in fact play, though of course I will say that I really didn't know that it was this many. Either way, they are claiming a whopping 68% performance increase over that Qualcomm chip. But the really big news here is that they're actually comparing it to AMD's newest HX370. And as you can see, according to this, and really quickly, the reason why I keep saying as you can see and what Intel is saying and things like that is just because Intel is definitely known for sort of cooking the books, at least when it comes to their performance slides. They'll do some really kooky stuff to make them look way better than what they actually are. But if it does end up being true, this would be a huge upset. And next up for today, we finally have some benchmarks on AMD's Ryzen 9700X and 9600X with that new 105W TDP. And when you're ready to dive deeper into the world of PC hardware, check out the one place I trust and today's sponsor. Brilliant, the online learning platform that teaches you with a hands-on approach, meaning you aren't just memorizing something or reading about it, you experience it with their interactive puzzles. Because if you're like me, you have a tough time concentrating and staying engaged when learning. And that's really why I love talking about Brilliant. They made learning computer science easier than ever. And the best part is that they have courses for not only beginners, but even professionals. Whether it's starting out with the basics, their new course on large language models, or just learning to code, Brilliant has it all. And today, when you visit brilliant.org slash gamermeld, they're offering my viewers a 30-day free trial. So if you haven't checked it out yet, there's nothing to lose. Plus, when you use my link, you'll get 20% off your annual premium. Once again, visit brilliant.org slash gamermeld for 20% off and a free trial. Now, back to the story, if you saw my recent video, you know that at least from WCCF Tech, AMD is definitely releasing this 105 watt TDP mode in an upcoming Agisa update. So far, only MSI had released this for their motherboards, but now ASUS has added the same 105 watt TDP mode to their AM5 motherboards, and with that, we finally have some of our first benchmarks. As you can see right here, this actually comes from a Japanese website where they got a chance to test these out with that 105 watt TDP. And starting things off, we have a few games, first being Black Myth Wukong, and as you can see, so we have the 9700X at 65 watts, and then we have it at 105 watts. Not only is the 105 watts not any faster, it's technically slower, though I will say that it's within margin of error. I mean, it's barely slower. It's not a big difference at all. It's basically the same as a 65 watt TDP. Then we have the 9600X where you can see it does it yet again. And moving on, oh, and really quickly, I do want to point out, I looked this up. They are using the 7900 XTX for this and it's a 1080p. So if there is going to be a bit of a difference, you would think that we would see it here. Moving on, we have Counter-Strike 2, and unfortunately, yet again, 
it's happening here. The 9700X at 65 watts is essentially identical to its 105 watt counterpart. Then we have 9600X, which is pretty much identical yet again. I mean, it's a slight boost, but once again, we're talking within the margin of error. Then we have F1 2024 and we see it again. Basically, it's looking like neither the 9700X or 9600X at a higher TDP are set to really get any performance when it comes to games. And I will say that this isn't really that much of a surprise when it comes to the games part, just because the 7700X, even though it has a higher TDP, it only uses when gaming, I believe it's around like 70 watts. So unfortunately, games aren't really able to use tons of cores, especially all at the same time working in parallel. This has been a thing for quite a while now, and while it has gotten better over the years, it still really doesn't use all that many cores. With that said, on things that do use more cores, like Cinebench 2024, you can see here is where the 9700X and 9600X did get a boost in performance with the 9700X getting quite a bit more, obviously because the 9600X doesn't really use all that much more than 65 watts anyway, but it does still in multi-core get at least a little bit of a boost, but the 9700X gets a very nice boost going from 1103 points to 1212. Ultimately, if you have one of these CPUs or you're planning on purchasing one and you do a lot of gaming but don't really do any kind of professional workloads, I would just leave it at 65 watts. On the other hand, if you do, do other professional workloads and things like that, you're definitely gonna wanna use that 105 watt mode. And next up, we have a huge story on AMD's brand new Ryzen 5 7600X3D. Specifically, we finally have some benchmarks. But before I get to that, don't forget why I'm calling this quite possibly one of, if not the best gaming CPU out there, potentially even better than the 7800X3D, simply because it's quite a bit cheaper. This bad boy is set to release. Now, the bad news is that it's only coming to Micro Center, but set to release for just $299. And while yes, this is a six core 12 thread CPU versus eight core 16 thread, just like with the benchmarks that we were looking at before, gaming really doesn't need all that many cores. Case in point, this right here was some quick benchmarks that Tom's Hardware ran with the new CPU. And as you can see, this is multiple games right here, 11 custom game scenes, eight inbuilt game benchmarks, and this is the average FPS between all of them set to 1080p with an RTX 4090. And as you can see, a 299 or as they say, $300, a $300 CPU actually beats the 14,900K in games. Now, I will say that the 14,900K here does not have any kind of memory overclock, while the 7600X3D does have the Expo memory overclock, but they simply didn't have time for that by the time that they needed to release the article. But even if it does end up matching it or, you know, getting right at the same performance, we're still talking about a $300 CPU in gaming, at least being able to beat out a $530 CPU. Not only that, but when compared to the 7800X3D, it only gets around 9% more performance while it's, I believe, 19. Although if we take that $400 price point, we're looking at over 30% more expensive, making the Ryzen 5 7600X3D the ultimate gaming CPU. And lastly for today, talking about ultimate gaming stuff, NVIDIA's RTX 5000 series is definitely looking like the ultimate gaming desktop GPUs. Unfortunately, they're definitely going to suck some wild amounts of power. As you can see right here, this is the well-known leaker, Copite 7 Kimmy, who's definitely gotten tons of leaks right in the past when it comes to NVIDIA GPUs. And as you can see right here, it says, I know someone got the details of GeForce of Blackwell recently. Both of them all have some increase in power consumption with higher SKUs increasing more. Then they got a comment that said, I say 550 watts for the RTX 5090, to which Copite 7 Kimmy replied with more. Then they said 600 watts, this one comes from Leaker Raichu, 600 watts for 5090 and 400 watts for 5080 is right, meaning I'll bet Raichu may have heard something similar as well, to which Copite 7 Kimmy said, yeah. Basically, if you were sort of teetering on the edge with the RTX 4090 with your PSU, 
you're definitely going to need a new one for the 5090. I mean, 600 watts is absolutely wild. Some people may literally have to upgrade the wiring in their house just to be able to handle this. With all of that said, there is some good news here. As you can see, it says, an important detail not mentioned earlier but confirmed to video cards by Kobite 7 Kimmy is that the RTX 5080 is projected to show a 1.1 times increase in performance over the RTX 4090. And what's impressive here is the fact that the 50 80 does that at 50 watts less, so it's able to get a 10% performance increase over the 4090 with 50 less watts, meaning the RTX 5090 should be an absolute monster at 600 watts. Ultimately, what all of this means, if it ends up being true, is that while yes, the wattage is yet again going up, it seems like it's been creeping up for quite a while now, actually uh, 600 watts is more than a creep, but the RTX 5000 series should see a massive boost in performance. So while that does it for today, which RTX 5000 series GPU are you planning to get? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to try out Brilliant for free at brilliant.org slash gamermelt. And as always, have a great day.